let's say we have a graph G with a set of vertices and a set of edges and this is an undirected connected graph. So the spanning tree G dash with the set of vertices D dash and set of edges E dash will be a subgraph of G and also this spanning tree can be created only from an undirected connected uh, graph. It cannot be created from a disconnected graph. Now this spanning tree will include all the vertices of the graph and these vertices will be connected using the minimum possible number of edges. So that means this spanning tree needs to have all the vertices of the graph. If any vertex is missing, then we cannot say that it is a spanning tree. The spanning tree will not have cycles and it cannot be disconnected. So the spanning tree will also be connected. Every connected and undirected graph will have at least one spanning tree, though it can have more than one as well. And as we said earlier, there is no spanning tree of a disconnected graph. All possible spanning trees which are created from the graph have the same number of vertices, that means V dash is equal to V. And if the number of vertices, if we specify that by N, then the spanning tree will consist of N minus 1 edges. That means E dash will be equal to N minus 1. Edges of the spanning tree may or may not have weights assigned to them. If the graph is a complete undirected graph, then it can have a maximum of n to the power of n minus 2 number of spanning trees. That means let's say if the number of vertices is 4, then the maximum possible spanning trees, assuming that it is a complete undirected graph, would be 4, which is n to the power of n minus 2, which is 4 minus 2, which will be 4 square. That means 16. So let's say this is a graph G which is given to us. We can see that there are four vertices. So the spanning trees would have the same number of vertices. That means the spanning tree would also have four vertices. And the number of edges in the spanning tree would be number of vertices, which is four minus one, which is equal to three. So these are some possible spanning trees, each of these is having four vertices. So all the four vertices need to be there in the spanning tree. So here we can see that there are four vertices connected with the minimum possible number of edges so that it remains connected. And we can also see that the number of edges is three. This also is a spanning tree. The number of vertices is four and number of edges is three. Again, this is also a spanning tree where the number of vertices are 4 and the number of edges is 3. You can see that in each of the spanning tree, there cannot be any cycle. So if this is the number of vertices and we say that number of edges has to be 3, this cannot be a spanning tree. We cannot say that this is a spanning tree. First of all, this is not a connected graph as this vertex over here is isolated. Also, there is a cycle over here. So this we cannot say that this is a spanning tree. All the vertices need to be connected with each other. So the properties of the spanning tree is that first, it does not have any cycles or loop. It is minimally connected. That means if we remove any further edge from this tree, it will make the graph disconnected. So if this is the minimum spanning tree, removing any one more edge. So if we remove this, then we can see that the graph will become disconnected. If we remove this, then again, we can see that the graph will be become disconnected. So that means that this spanning tree is minimally connected. Also, it is maximally acyclic. That means if we add one edge to the tree, then it is going to create a loop. So if we add this edge, we can see that a loop is being created. Or if we add this edge over here, again we see that a loop is being created. So it, we can say that the spanning tree needs to be maximally acyclic. Now if the graph is a complete graph, the spanning tree can be constructed by 
removing e minus n plus 1 edges. So the graph is a complete graph that means that there is an edge from a vertex to all other vertices in the graph. So every vertex is connected to every other vertex of the graph. So here we can see that the number of edges in this example is 6, number of vertices is 4. So 6 minus 4 plus 1 is equal to 3. So by removing a maximum of 3 edges, a spanning tree can be created. So we can see that this is a spanning tree. So this and this and this edge has been removed. And for the this spanning tree, we can see that this edge, this edge and this edge has been removed. And this is the maximum number of edges that can be removed. If we remove any further edge, so if we remove this one more edge, then it will become a disconnected graph. Or if we remove this edge, it will become a disconnected graph. So the maximum number of edges that can be removed from a complete graph is E minus N plus 1. So what are the applications of a spanning tree? It is used to find a minimum path to connect all the nodes of the graph. And common applications can be cluster analysis, civil network planning, computer network routing protocol. So let's take the example of a, a locality where there are a number of houses which can be considered as nodes or vertices and a telecommunication network has to be laid. So a spanning tree can give you the, the, the connections which will connect all the houses with the telecommunication lines with using the minimum number of lines. So what is a minimum spanning tree? This is a spanning tree that has the minimum weight among all possible spanning trees. So we have seen that any graph can have many spanning trees and the weight of a spanning tree is determined by the sum of weight of all the edges involved in it. So if there are weights assigned to edges, then the weight of the spanning tree will be the sum of the weights of the edges. And whichever spanning tree has the minimum weight amongst all or the minimum cost, that is referred to as the minimum spanning tree. And these weights can be considered as distances, traffic loads or congestions or any other uh, random value in real life applications. So an MST is optimal for minimizing the total edge weight and in case the weights that are assigned to the edges are not distinct, then the MST may not necessarily be unique. So let's take an example. This is the same graph and now we are having some weights which are being assigned to the edges. And as usual, we can create a set of spanning trees over here. Number of vertices will remain the same, which is four. Number of edges will remain, will be equal to the number of vertices minus one. So this will be three. So these are the different spanning trees. Let us compute the cost of each spanning tree here. In this example, you can see that the cost is the sum of the weights and this comes out to be 17. Here in this one, it is 18 and this is 16. So as you can see that the you can compute the weights of each of these spanning trees. For this spanning tree, if you see the weight of this spanning tree or the cost is 13. And if you see that out of all the spanning trees, this one is having the minimum cost associated with it. So this spanning tree will refer to as the MST or the minimum spanning tree. Now in this graph, we saw that each of these weights were unique, distinct. So that means there was when the weights are distinct, we just had a unique MST. But if the weights are not distinct, let's say, this AB edge is also having a weight 4 and BC is also having a weight 4, then the MST will not be unique. You can see that this, MST, this spanning tree is also having a cost 13 and this spanning tree is also having a cost of 13. So since the weights are not distinct, then the MST is also not unique. You can have 
multiple minimum spanning trees. There is a property which is known as the cut property in a minimum spanning tree. So it says that take any cut, cut means you partition the vertices into two sets in the original graph. So if let's say this was the original graph and we partition it or cut it, that means this was the graph and, and it has been cut into vertices of two sets. So this is one set A and B and this is another set C, D. And now this set, these two sets, what is the minimum weightage that crosses the cut? So if you look at this graph now, what is that edge which is connecting these two sets? It, they can be connected using this edge, this edge or this edge. Out of these three edges, the minimum weight is of this edge. So if this is the edge with minimum weight that crosses the cut, then this edge will definitely be part of the MST. We had seen earlier that this is the MST for the graph. So you can see that this edge is part of the MST. Let's take another example of the cut. So let's say we now cut the vertices into two sets such that A, C and B are forming one set and B is forming another set. So now what are the edges which are crossing the cut? One is this edge and one is this edge. Out of these two edges, we can see that this edge BC is of minimum weight. So you can see that this edge will always be part of the MST. And you can see that this is part of the MST. Similarly, you can cut the graph in various ways and see the minimum weight edge crossing the cut. So this is known as the cut property. Now there are two important uh, tree al spanning tree algorithms which can be used to find out the minimum spanning tree. One is the Kruskal's algorithm, the other one is Prim's algorithm. We will check both these algorithms in our subsequent videos.